Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to our fourth and final segment of the worldwide online being experience. What, what a day it has been, and it's only about to get better. Isn't it amazing? What an amazing life. It's always only going to get better. Not like there's anything wrong with right now. So we have a, our most packed segment yet with what's on our schedule today. So we're going to jump right in. Is everybody, everybody here that's accounted for, Lindsay? Are we missing any of our uh, speakers today? But I do see so we have. So I, uh, I was looking for Martha. I was looking for Jules um, before I let everyone in, but I didn't see them. So I'm sure they're in here somewhere. Um, yeah. Let me go through here. and, Or if you're here, just say you're here in the chat. <laughs> Martha, Jules. Thanks so much, Rain, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Steve had this piece in the Phoenix event, which I cannot replicate, but it was such a, it really, really hit me. And that is when you hear me or anyone acknowledging someone and you're thinking, well, I want that recognition, hear yourself in that. It's not, it's, it's not possible to say everyone out, everyone out by name, but if you want acknowledgement, acknowledge yourself for that and, and, and hear yourself in the acknowledgement of everyone. So if I, if, I, if, I, if I acknowledge Carrie for her glasses, she has such nice glasses, and you also do. I have amazing glasses. I love my glasses. So own that also. Own whatever you hear. hear. Hear it all about you. Live your life that it's all about you. It's so fun. It's so fun. So um, our first speaker on, on, our, on our agenda today is going to be James Klein. James has also been one of those people that I've seen in the group as just a powerhouse as soon as, 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 as he started showing up. And, and like I heard other people tell me, have you seen... James Klein's post yet? I was like, who, I, I, who, who is that? What, when did this start happening? And it's just like, boom. And it's just like sharing, he's showing up, he's being authentically him. And I love that. And when I'm looking for, when I was sitting with, this is how it came to me when creating the experience of like, who would I love to hear from? And I just went with whatever names came to mind. And James James is one of those people that came to mind and I was like, reached out to him and said, James, will you do the honor of sharing with us in this being experience, our last segment of experiences of being, or, or what do you want to share like that? I love how Judy set up the last um, segment about, you know, if this is you, if you had a few minutes to share anything, what, what would you share? And, and this is what it's all about. So if at the end of this segment and all the speakers, we have more time, this is an opportunity for anyone to share what comes up for them. But to start us off, we're going to give it to James Klein. And I don't have all of your um, certificates and achievements in front of me, but we all know that you're a master <laughs> musician and you express yourself a lot through that. And I was, I, I did partake in your, in your birthday rendition this morning and, and I connected with you in that, like that was a very, very soul connected piece. So um, take it away. All right, thanks Rafal. Before I begin, we're gonna have a repeat of the serenade. Let me put myself so I don't wanna be looking at myself the whole time while I'm doing this. Okay, so I invite you to sing this note. Ah, you're all on mute, so you can sing it as loud as you want. You ready? One, two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Steve. Keep singing. You guys got to sing. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. I'm not on the And many more. Oh. All right. 
Steve, thank you so much for sharing your special day, your 67th trip around the sun with all of us. I want you to do another couple of things for me. First of all, I'd like you to take your right hand, put it on your heart, and put your left hand over your right hand. In the first segment, if you were here with us for that, Steve invited us to be extraordinary listeners. So I'm inviting you now for just a moment to be an extraordinary listener to what's coming up in your heart. And now I would like to invite you to be an extraordinary listener to what's coming up with all of the hearts and minds that are gathered here together right now, all the hearts and minds that are going to see this in the future. Listen to that in an extraordinary way. We are at the epicenter of a tsunami of love, an earthquake of love, the shock waves of the being movement are going to spread all over the world and millions of lives are going to be transformed by what we are doing here right now. All right, I want you to do one more thing for me. If we were live, I'd ask you to shout this out, but today I'm just gonna ask you to put it in the chat. So the question is, who are you being today? And what I want you to do, I'm going to ask you, and I want you with all the force you can muster underneath your fingertips, write, I am being wonderful me. Ready? Who are you being today? Type it in the chat. I am being wonderful me. It's amazing to see all these come up in the chat. Thank you. And when we get together, if we ever get together in person, we can all shout it out. You can shout it out right now if you want to. Nobody's going to hear you, but you can shout it out and maybe make it reverberate throughout the world. Like a lot of the presenters, I was pretty nervous last night and this morning, wondering what I'm going to talk about. And I like how Judy posed the question, if you had 15 minutes, I only, have, I only have six minutes left to share the last thing you're going to share, what would that be? Let me share with you what happened to me this morning. I woke up all nervous, but I went in my bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I said, hey, James, look at you. Wonderful you, there you are. I love you. I was going to wear a suit, but I decided to wear a shirt. This is my favorite shirt because it reminds me that I am wonderful me, that I show up for myself all the time. In fact, this shirt reminds me that I've shown up for yoga 1,779 days in a row today. If I, if I do yoga today, which of course I'm going to do yoga today. So I'm a numbers guy, but only always, just like Steve. So I had to look back and see when I bought the Ultimate Coach book. I bought the Ultimate Coach book 248 days ago. 248 days. December 10th is when I bought it. And I must have plowed through that sucker at lightning speed because I joined the Ultimate Coach Facebook group on December 13th. And I remember that I didn't join the Ultimate Coach Facebook group until I'd finished the book because the invitation is at the back of the book. What sold me about buying the book was the fact that the back cover was printed in the Amazon description. On the back cover, those of you who are familiar with this, and I'm assuming most of you are, Steve says, please do not read this book about me. Read this book about you. Read it about being. And then he gives all sorts of questions to ask. So, you know what? I read the book about me. 
every time there was a biographical story about something that happened in Steve's life, I said, how does this apply to me? Every time there was a description of Steve working with one of his clients, I imagined myself working with Steve. Probably most importantly, every time there was a description of what Steve did, his coaching methods, his philosophy, I asked myself, how could that be about me? The question that stuck with me, or the statement that stuck with me the most, the first trip to the book and ever since, was no one is worthy of my judgment. Everyone is worthy of my love. When I first read that, probably on December 12th or something, it hit my brain like a stick of dynamite. And I thought to myself, who would I need to be to make that true? Who would I need to be to notice the judgment I'm passing on other people? To notice the judgment I'm passing on myself? Who would I need to be to replace that judgment with love? Who would I need to be to realize that no one is worthy of my judgment, especially me? Everyone is worthy of my love, especially me. The last question that Steve asks in the foreword to the book, who would I need to be to read the Ultimate Coach book and have a personal breakthrough in being wonderful me? Well, there are all sorts of other hardisonisms that we can find in the book, but for me, the one that sticks out the most is the one that stuck in my head and lodged in there and completely transformed my life. I would need to be the person who believes that no one is worthy of my judgment. Everyone is worthy of my love. That's who I would need to be to have a personal breakthrough in being wonderful me. Okay, let's try that again because, as Steve says, if you speak it into the world, you'll watch it occur. But for us, if we're going to chat it into the world, if you chat it into the world, Watch it occur. Who are you being today? Type into the chat with as much force as you can muster. I am being wonderful me. All right, I see all those coming in. Thank you so much. I have about 42 seconds left. I self-imposed my, get to give myself nine minutes. So let me give some quick acknowledgements. First of all, Lindsay Gilman, you're doing a fantastic job as the Zoom master for this shindig. That's just amazing. Rafal Wolf, without you, this event wouldn't have happened. Eric Lofholm, without you creating the Facebook group, none of us would be here. Steve Hardison, if it weren't for your inspiration, none of this would happen. And I want to give a special acknowledgement to Amy Hardison and Alan D. Thompson for writing the book that's changed us and caused us to think about being wonderful us. All right, loving you all. Thank you so much, James. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for that little exercise. We're going to go straight into our next speaker. We got Jules, hello, Wyatt. Jules? I am looking for him now. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that he's here. He is here. Hey, Jules, if you want to raise your hand, that would be helpful for me. I'm still learning some of this. And then when oh, I see you. I see you. I see you there. Okay, let me do my intro to Jules. For those of, for those of you who do not know Jules, and have not connected with him yet. Jules is a forever student and Jules is always sharing just little bits of gold that he is literally living through. 
Jules is constantly reading and just sharing. It's like, it's like his own personal life that he shares with us daily, little quips and little quotes. And that's like powerful being and powerful shifts. Now, I'm not going to say anything, you know, personal, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe how young Jules actually is because he looks super duper young and you wouldn't believe it. That's because Jules is forever is, is, is a real master that Steve mentioned of someone who recognizes that he's always a student. And I was always, and still am in awe of that. And that was one of the real pushes that came to me when I invited Jules to share with us is, is this, he landed for me as someone who's a powerful being, very, very wise, always is learning and has lots of wisdom to share. So please, Jules, please grace us. Thank you so much, Rafal. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for making this event possible. I appreciate you. I love you. And we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So good afternoon, family. Let's ground ourselves in a state of being that represents peace and universal love. As Judy said, please place your left hand over your heart, right hand over your belly, and gently close your eyes. Taking a few long, slow, deep belly breaths, inhaling through your nose as your belly expands, and exhaling through your nose as your belly contracts while bringing a slight smile to your lips. Notice where to go, nowhere to be, just abiding in gratitude for all the gifts we possess. Breathing in what you need and breathing out what no longer serves you. Easy in, easy out. Letting go and surrendering. Let's rest here for just a couple seconds. When you are ready, please open your eyes. Thank you so much. On the back cover of The Ultimate Coach, Steve Hardison challenges us with six questions of being. For this segment, I'd like to focus on two questions as it applies to my life. The question is, who would you need to be to be a more loving person? And who would you need to be to be fully in love with myself and my life? I'm trying not to get emotional. Hopefully I can make it through this. My story is about surviving a combat tour in Iraq and dealing with the aftermath of a moral and emotional injury. Returning home was not easy. Understanding that caring is not the same thing as carrying was an awakening. Having a condition of any sort impacts how you show up. Our messes tend to create our messages. I had to relearn how to abide in love at all times, minus the internal chaos. I chose gratitude as my state of being to get me there. I purchased a gratitude journal by Sarah Von Brethnack, the author of Simple Abundance. What I discovered was amazing. The directions were to write five things and or people that I was grateful for each day. I found myself looking for ways to be grateful from the cashier at the local gas station, catching their names so I could write it down in my journal to expressing deep appreciation to my family and this life. It's good to be alive. Each time I offered gratitude to anything, I would imagine adding more points to my vibrational score. As I began seeing life through the eyes of gratitude, it became obvious to me that each and every interaction, outcome and circumstance was a gift created to inspire my highest and greatest good even when it was confusing, overwhelming, or frustrating to encounter. I believe everyone to some extent has a day in their lives that was not ideal. Perhaps it was the worst day of their lives. My perspective is that every day that I wake up and it is not that day, I am immersed in a state of deep gratitude. It is a paradigm shift that creates a ripple effect. I had to remember that a state of being is a quality of your present experience. States of being are qualities, not goals. Being more loving or grateful is not an achievement. It is a state. Deciding what states of being you want to experience and you will have a powerful decision criteria that you can use to evaluate your actions. It was Susan David, 
who said how we deal with our outer world, correction, how we deal with our inner world drives everything. It's how we live, love, parent, and lead. Having the courage to be authentic is worth the journey. I had discovered that states of being help you answer the question, is what I'm doing right now working? So the litmus test for me is if I wanna be loving, are my actions, thoughts, and emotions coming from a place of love? Present moment awareness to what's happening inside and outside of the body is a critical distinction. Byron Katie, with whom I've heard mentioned earlier, wrote a book called Loving What Is, and it also had a profound impact on my life. Today, I approach everything I do with love. Love wins is my motto. It's one of the reasons I keep turning back to Steve's question, who do I need to be to be more loving? And the short answer is adopting a perpetual attitude of gratitude and unconditional love which used to be so elusive for me. With the help of the Ultimate Coach Facebook page and writing my declaration and reading it every day, I have finally found a haven of inner peace. My wife, Lisa, is my best friend. She keeps me grounded and in a state of being that allows all my gifts to shine through. My family is my refuge setting an intention every day as if my actions were to be broadcasted for all to see on the six o'clock news has helped me to be much more authentic, mindful, and empathetic. Your homework, yes, there is homework family, is what are three to five states of being you would like to experience on a daily basis? Perhaps that's being more at peace, more confident, a better parent, et cetera. And are your current actions resulting in those states of being most of the time? If not, how can you change them? I'd like to leave you with the Optimist Creed written by Christian D. Larson in 1912. I hope these words serve you. Please close your eyes. Promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. To talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet to make all your friends feel that there is something worthwhile in them, to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true, to think only of the best, to work only for the best, and to expect only the best, to be just enthusiastic about the success of others as you are about your own, to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future, to wear a cheerful countenance at all times and give a smile to every living creature that you meet, to give so much time to improving yourself that you have no time to criticize others, to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, too strong for fear, and just too happy to permit the presence of trouble. You can go ahead and open your eyes now. It has been such a privilege and an honor to be here with all of you. I am humbled by this experience. Thank you, Lindsay, for putting this on. Thank you, Rafal, my brother, for spearheading this. I love you. You matter to me, and I appreciate you. And thank you, Steve, for your vision and your wisdom, and Amy for scribing the ultimate coach. It has been remarkable for my, for, for my, own, for my own self, for my own being. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jules. I want us just to sit with a minute because I need a minute. To, to, to just sit with what Jules has shared. You shared a lot of stuff. That's a, there's a lot there that we can go back with and just be with. And that's what, that's what I really see this whole being experience is about all these thoughts on being. You, you get to marinate in that. Whether you understand it or not, you get to just be with that and be with the people.
we're going to move on to our next speaker, who's also one of our hosts. And that is that is that is our dear Lindsay. Lindsay um, has been in the been in the group lar longer than I have. And Lindsay is one of those power sources running through the group because Lindsay is living is living the life. Steve mentioned the distinction between the concept of you and the experience of you. And I don't even know what the concept of Lindsay is because she has always just been giving us the experience of her and everything she shares in her raw, authentic life journey. I don't even know how I would describe Lindsay because I never got to see the description. I only got the experience, which is beyond words. And that's why I'm happy to be able to hear from her and to have you here also doubling as our, our moderator and host. So she can mute herself or unmute herself. Like, I don't even know how that works, but go take it away, Lindsay. Hi. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, Rafal, I just want to acknowledge you. This has turned out to be, I think, um, even more powerful than the initial thought when this came to mind to create this. Um, I love the story of how this came to be um, with us all here now together. Um, and I just want to say thank you for having me here and I honor you and all of the speakers. Thank you. This has been so wonderful. I have written down so much gold. <laughs> it's been absolutely unreal. And what's been so interesting is that what I came here to talk about, like some of the other speakers have said, has shifted as I've been listening and um, how wonderful is it that we all inspire one another. And my, my intention today was to listen as if um, it's about me listening to all of you. And so um, before I get started, I encourage you all to listen to what I'm about to share as if it's about you. And um, what I wanna talk about is, I used to think that, it was just in the chat earlier, I used to think that reality was something that I had to face, something that was happening to me. Um, I was completely unaware that I had full control over creating my being, which therefore would create my reality around me. And it was a really scary place to live. When you live as if reality is happening to you, you are at the mercy of anything, anybody's reaction, anything that happens. And um, I come from a place of really working with the body. Um, that's the kind of coaching that I do. That's um, the language that I speak. And that way of being put my body into a place of survival mode, fight or flight. And I was constantly on edge and experiencing anxiety and depression, living from that state. And, um, you know, as I, as a child, my, my, my mom was pretty severely mentally ill and I witnessed things that no little one should ever have to experience. And, um, in that there was a lot of misinterpretation, like was discussed in the chat here earlier as children, we will misinterpret reality. And I started to define myself as somebody who wasn't wanted as somebody who, um, wasn't important enough for my mom to want to stay here living. Um, and I also started to believe that who I was, the definition of who I was, was what other people define me as being. And so I allowed my assumptions and my interpretations of what people thought I was to dictate who I thought I was. I had no idea really who Lindsay was. I um, like to describe it as if I had a, a closet full of costumes and I would, I would assume what the person in front of me wanted me to be, what they wanted me to produce. And I would put that costume on and nobody got to know real me. It was completely inauthentic. Relationships suffered um, because ultimately my real true kind of um, lost self would come out. And um, I didn't realize that I was the one. I was the one that determined who I was being, um, who I really was. And reading this book, I'm mean, coming into this group 
reading this book was really the first time in my 30 plus years of life that I went, whoa, wait a second. I, I am, I am the one that is, that, that is in control here of my being in control of, of my reality around me. And I talked about this on the podcast, on the ultimate coach podcast, how I'm an artist. I love to cook. I love to crochet all fiber arts, paint, draw, writing. Writing is one of my favorite art forms. And in my process of producing art is when I would feel the most me, when I would feel um, the most authentic, I would feel more in touch with who I was, who I am. And when I realized that I'm never not creating, I'm always creating. It was like this light bulb that went off in, in me that was, oh my God, my whole life is art. I have this big blank canvas now and I get to create whatever it is that I want to be, what I want to experience, the reality that I want to have. And it became so much fun. One of the things that I would talk about a lot when I was sharing this group with people and, and the experience is that I'm having so much fun. And that life becomes this experience of play where it's like, gosh, who do I want to be today? What do I want to experience today? What do I want to feel today? What, what feelings do I want to generate with inside myself today to experience? And nothing can take that away. Nothing can, can, can shift that. It's, it's all with inside me. And in this process over the last eight months, I've gotten to really experience who I am, who Lindsay really is. There's no more costumes. There's no more guessing or assuming what people want from me. I'm showing up as me. And in that, I am, I'm seeing that reflection in everyone else that I'm, I'm interacting with. And it's been such a beautiful experience. It's been life-changing. It's it's healing my relationships, not only to other people, but really with myself. And something that I want to touch on just briefly is because I speak the language of the body, right? And, and the nervous system and, and those things, because we are spiritual beings, but we are having a human experience. Is in that humanness in this body that we're in, our being can actually quite literally shift the doing of our physical body too. And I'm finding that over the last eight months, I haven't had to do nearly as much of my regulating exercises that I've had to do. I haven't had to, to pause midday to go, I gotta go meditate for a little bit here. Not that, I mean, I love meditating, but I'm not having to do that as much. It's not a need as much because I'm intentionally creating myself to be somebody who is peace, to be somebody who is present, to be somebody who's experiencing joy. And my nervous system is doing that. It's like law, it's science and it doesn't fail me. And I'm able to teach that to my clients and it's changing things. The ripple effect of this is changing so many people's lives, not just internally, but physically as well. And um, something that I wanted to share is that there's this quote by Kai Green, and it is in the mind of every artist, there's a masterpiece. And each one of you are artists. You are the artist of your life. You are, the, you are the, the movie star. You are the main player here. And what you're creating is a masterpiece. Bringing in that intentionality, bringing in that awareness is going, each one of us is going to create our own masterpieces, which together collectively is something that is there's no words, it's immeasurable. The beauty, the magnificence. And so I just wanna thank each of you because you all, your masterpieces play a part in my experience, in our experience in the world. And it has been nothing just about of beauty. It's been beauty, it's been bliss, it's been joy. And I am so deeply grateful for each one of you. So thank you. Thank you for letting me be here today, Rafal, and letting me share. Thank you so much, Lindsay. That was, that was so good and so powerful. And again, we could all really just sit in that. And 
Well, I, I just really like that, that point that you brought in about when we're being, there's no more, there's no more costumes. Your life becomes 100% all the way through. And what I also heard in what you're saying is that we get to look at if we ever feel like we're switching hats and now I have to show up as this person, like, look at that. What would it, what would be if you just were, if you were just the same person the whole time? How freeing I felt the freedom that you were talking about when you shared that. And I love that. It's just like, it's also kind of like what Steve said, just like relax around everything. Everything is, is so fun. And I, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I, I wrote here, I don't know if you said this, but what I wrote, Lindsay just said, is being is authenticity in each moment. That is the ultimate state of being. And that's why being is the ultimate experience. So thank you. Thank you for that. I'd like to call upon Martha Jeffers. Martha is also a very energetic contributor to their group. And someone who came to mind when I thought about who can share. And when I approached Martha, Martha, and she, she was a little nervous. I said, perfect. That's why you're for sure doing it. That's a great way to paint the target on your back and you're in. So, but it wasn't such a target. It was, she was in, she was in. It wasn't such a torture. So I'm so happy that Martha is able to join us. And Martha, please, please grace us because we will be graced. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. This is such a joy to be here with so many people and with all of you. And thank you, Rafael, for the invitation. I, I have to tell you, I am very nervous. It's like uh, my son went to grab my hand and he goes, Mom, I go, yeah, it's a little clammy, I'm afraid. But this is all good. So I, I sat with the thought of, uh, what should I talk about for this event? I sat with it for quite a while. And then I re reflected on the word should. The oper operative word that has us and me at times ensnarled when coming from an ego place of being. You know, that part of me that wants to please, that wants to be seen, that wants to be acknowledged, that wants to be approved, to be recognized. You know, you fill in the blank. And not necessarily coming from a place of inspiration. You know, that part of me that still desires to look good and show up in the light, the expectation that I should know better and should have evolved exponentially, the shoulds, the couldas. But now I kind of laugh at how suddenly I set expectations of myself without realizing the lack of agreement I've had with myself that's profound. And for that matter, with another, I, I hope that people can relate to this. The end result of all this is the fact that there's disappointment and feelings of failure, of not enoughness, of a comparison hangover, of limited beliefs. It's almost like a drunken stupor that I get into fed by mouths of shoulda, coulda, wouldas. This expectation hangover has a strong, was a strong pattern that ran, that ran through my life in the past. Not that it has fully evaporated now, but I'm more conscious of this pattern that more subtly appears and is more present with me. So I forgive myself for buying into the misunderstanding that I need to be other than or have to live up to my own expectations. The truth is I don't need to be other than who I am in my most authentic self. The idea that I should be further along in my evolution and expect that to be true after all the work I've done, I've had to stop and look at that and reframe it in a more compassionate way and say, all, that, all the work that I have done throughout my life is just to be here and this is perfect and this is the present moment. So what's really changed has been 
my willingness to expand and grow and heal at a much deeper level. Um, there's a daily, to daily and consciously put into practice intentionality, compassion and self-forgiveness, and commitment, more so than I don't ever recall my doing this. And it's also allowed myself to experience the full spectrum of who I'm being, that which I am without or dropping the judgments of who I should be, how I should talk, how I should be present, how I should speak. Oh my God, the shits keep on going. And not long ago, I met this incredible girl from the ultimate Facebook group with the most profound eyes that can see beyond the spoken word. And he called me out on this. Uh, touch my soul. And one of his statements to me was, when you are a servant of God, you're not busy because your actions are inspired. But when I'm coming from ego, when I'm the servant of ego, then my actions are not inspired. And so therefore, he said, divorce yourself from all kinds of complications. And then not long thereafter, I met this other beautiful soul who said to me, who would you need to be to let go of the addiction, I'm not good enough. That addiction that's been playing out in my life up until now, that has been not serving me in, in the least. And then there was another wonderful soul who said to me, you're an author of powerful writing. And through his encouragement, I posted one of my writings on the Tuck Facebook group. Uh, scared to death to do it, didn't want to do it, but in staying committed, I said yes, and promptly put something in Facebook. So this has been really about how to be at a depth that I had never experienced, to be aware, to enter into an inner dialogue of who I intend to be, devoid of limiting language or choosing to perpetuate old patterns of behavior. So it comes to choice at the moment of unsupported thought patterns. The shoulda, coulda, woulda, commentary that's detrimental to my soul. Choosing, to, choosing space for self-forgiveness and accepting the evolu that evolution exists only always on that learning path. So it's like, I'm walking this earth as though school was in session. And each challenge that comes forward really is an opportunity for me to step into that which I am at the most profound place of love. The presence of so many in this Ultimate Coach Facebook group has been no less than magical. It has been life-changing and it's been medicine to me. And it's filled with open vulnerability with so many of the souls that post so authentically. It's a community like I, no other that I know. The continued reference to the magnificent book of being entitled The Ultimate Coach has infused me with a deep awareness that to show up in life fully as I am, unapologetically me, without the mask of shoulda, coulda, or pretentious formulation is all about rising up in the morning and going to bed at night and in between with a spoken word that says, who do I need to be today? as love? Who do I need to be today as compassion or kindness or whatever quality that opens up or speaks to me at the moment? And then be that with intentionality, using self-forgiveness when I forget. Many of the people in this beautiful Facebook group have modeled and compellingly shown themselves to me where I am learning. It started with the Arizona event with Judy and absolutely with the book, The Ultimate Coach. 
one of the most extraordinary outcomes of the ultimate coach book has been the document. That which I read at the break of day, in the close of night, and many times in between. So a few lines from my document. I am one with spirit, the power behind all my creations. I am deep stillness, and in stillness, I listen deeply. I am the love unleashed in all its fullness. I am that refrains from judging others and myself. I'm a writer, a poet, and an author. I'm ageless, and always but always the young part. But not only has the book been important, but it's also been magnificent to be with so many beautiful souls. So I'm going to shout out to some of the people that have influenced me so much. Amy and Steve Hardison, Alan W. Thompson, Casey and Lindsay Gilman, Rafael Wolf, Cynthia Hamilton, Philip Bartow, Ariel Holmes, Ray Warren, Judy Thorson, Eric Lofton, Dominic London, Rosa Davis, Dave Orton, Rebecca Holtz, Sundance Robinson. But oh my God, so many more who have shared insights, thoughts, vulnerability on the Tech Facebook page, on Instagram, on podcast, on LinkedIn. It's through your being and me being with your posts that I receive insights healing and provocative posts, just. So I'm holding that through my and our continuous expansion into our profound sacred beingness, we are collectively evolving our world by embracing all that we are as children of the universe, of God, of the supreme being, the one. May those shoulds in our life evaporate into the nothingness from which they came, May I, we embrace our full humanity, knowing our souls seek only love. May the presence of this life allow us to be all that we are unapologetically. May peace reign only but always in our hearts. May joy embrace us, fill us, and sustain us. And finally, may the God of all creation illuminate the path, the very path on which we work, we walk today and always for the greater good. So please keep, please keep sharing, please keep posting, please keep showing up in all your fullness, being extraordinarily you. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you so much, Martha, for sharing that. You have a very, very poetic way of speaking in your voice. And we're just enthralled and entranced by your share. So thank you for for gracing us with that. And um, I have a little surprise. This wasn't part of the plan, but I'm I'm happy we were able to fit it in. I'd like to call upon Rebecca Holt, who was able to join us. And there was a lot going on. And luckily she's here with us. And, and I, I'd love to hear from her when, when I heard Rebecca sharing in the group and she just shares just from such an authentic centered place that it always was full of joy and truth and peace. And I, I, I was messaged her when I saw she was here. I said, would you please share with us for a few minutes as we're wrapping this up and then we'll, um, so please Rebecca. Thank you so much. <laughs> Whew, my heart is so full right now. And I'm, I'm going to ask if we can together just close our eyes for a minute. And this is a practice that, not even a practice, just this holiness that came to me in a yoga class several years ago. And I was in and suddenly like the back of my heart just like exploded with all this love. And all of a sudden I started feeling like the back of my heart was this avenue to the divine. And I asked my teacher at the time, what is this place? And she's like, oh, it's this portal to the divine that a lot of people don't know about. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to ask you all with me just to bring your loving presence to the back of the heart as a possibility that feels good to you. And just with the left hand on the heart, front of the heart and a right hand on top of that, and just breathe through the back of your heart 
and just open up that door who and allow that wind to come in that love that's all of us that i feel from all of you and just allowing it to open And if you're feeling your heartbeat as I am, who in this heartbeat, that's all of us together. It's like one heartbeat. And a couple of days ago, I was paying attention to lately. I've really been feeling the sacred and everything. And with this group, thank you, Steve and Amy and Alan for bringing the sacred to my life this year and allowing me to um, not be so hidden. Before this year, I've been a teacher for a long time and also a bit of an introvert, which is kind of an old story that I used to tell myself. And this year I've been able to share more of this sacred um, joy that I have. And I want to acknowledge you, Rafal, for your beauty. You're, you're such a beautiful being. And ever since, I, I don't even know from the beginning of the group, um, you reached out to me and have been such a loving presence. And on my birthday, Rafal reached out and said, how can I serve you? And did a conversation with me. And I just thought, this is the most loving thing of my day. This person who just is willing to spend some time with me on my birthday. And what a gift. I won't, I won't forget that. It's it just, you've like, you've been like these waves of love through this year for me. So Rafal, I, I cherish you and I honor you. And for creating this event through, I know what it is to create events. That's been my career in the past. And what it is for an event to change and then to see this blossom today in all of us is a true gift. I, um, I'm just checking in to see what else might be here present for me. And it is that the place of the heart. I know that's what I'm on the earth for is to be in the heart and to, to be that presence in our hearts. And the heart has a landscape. It has layers and it has Yesterday, I had this experience to be able to heal a very old thing with the help over the last couple of weeks of several amazing people. And yesterday, the end of that piece came and um, I am a new person today. And it was some judgments that I was having with my own mother. And what a effing gift. Um, I, I can't, even, can't even express to you what a different person I am today and how um, open my heart is because of this. And I know that this is possible and that, that even with sharing this, it's because of my own judgments and because of the, the way that I was being with an old thing and holding myself in this place. And it's such a place of choice. And I know Steve talks about that all the time, that it's a state of love. And I just want to express my gratitude for, for all of you for being a part of that, because as I have just been very, very clear in the last week, like this, I will let go of this. I will transform this. And a dear teacher of mine, who's a poet, he, his name is David White and he teaches all over the world. And I went to one of his workshops once. And he said, we don't do transformation. We open up the back of our heart and let the winds of love move through us. And that's another moment when I got that, I was like, oh, he's talking about the back of the heart. And I really feel like it is like when I can feel God, that little G that we all are. And I want to share this poem um, as I feel like everything we do literally is prayer. I was in Bali a couple of years ago for this retreat and my driver, who is this beloved man, his name was Leroy. And he was like a chief of his village, a driver, um, four different or five different things, owned an Airbnb, like all these different things. And he knew, you know, everything about the place we were in. And it was such a devotional place, all the people. And if you have been there, um, they pray all day long and they do these little prayers that are made of flowers and they're on the ground. Like you'll be walking and you just see these crushed flowers and you're like, Oh, everyone's praying. So I asked him, I'm like, Oh, you're doing these prayers like four times a day, like my naive self. And he's like, Oh my dear, everything we do is prayer. <sighs> And in that moment, I was like, yes, yes. I'm praying in my doing the dishes. I'm praying in my taking the dog out to go to the bathroom. Like I'm praying 
And it's like this sacredness that we all are in the messiness and in the chaos and in our, even in our judgments, we're praying for, to be lifted from that. And so this poem is, is a favorite of mine by Hafiz, the Sufi poet. And it says, it's called, now is the time to know that everything you do is sacred. Now is the time to know. Now is the time to know that all you do is sacred. Now, why not consider a lasting truce with yourself and God? Now is the time to understand that all your ideas of right and wrong were just a child training wills to be laid aside. When you can finally live with veracity and love, now is the time for the world to know that every thought and every action is sacred, that this is the time for you to compute the impossibility that there is anything but grace. Now is the season to know that everything you do is sacred. And that's my blessing and prayer for you, all of you, that now is the time to know that you are divine, that we are divine, that every, every cell of our being and every note of our heart, that we're all a note. And that, that expression that Chris, you're beautiful being today. Ah, I had to turn off my camera because I was just crying and feeling your authenticity and that sacredness that when we, we play that note out in the world, it's our being, it's our essence that joins people to themselves. And thank you, Steve, for, for being um, that divine. And every time I just see in your eyes, it's like that wonder, that childlike seeing of the divine that helps me to see that in you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you, Rafal, for asking me to be here today. And blessings. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you so much. That was such a powerful share. Thank you for bringing your energy and being willing to jump on last minute. I want to really, really honor each and every one of you have been here and created this space more than one person asked me before today if the event is being recorded and the answer is that no you can't record this you can rewatch this video the video will be available but the being experience is not being recorded you can't that's it i don't know if when you rewatch the replay if you lock yourself in a room and you really focus on it, maybe you can attempt to re-experience that. But if all you got today was even just being here together with over a hundred people, I've never been in such experience. Zoom has never experienced such an experience before. So I really, really honor each and every one of you for being here and for being part of this. And we're going to ask Eric, the creator of the group, the creator of all this, I wouldn't be here without the group that Eric created, without his leadership. I want to ask Eric to give us some closing remarks. Fantastic. Well, it is so great to uh, be with all of you today. Seeing 100 to 200 people on here is incredible. And Lindsay, am I able to do a screen share? Um, I can try to do that. Let me figure that out. Make me a co-host and that should allow me to screen share. And I wanted to, to show you guys one thing about how all this got created in the first place. And uh, figuring it out. <laughs> not a problem. So while we're waiting for that to happen or not happen, um, I want to share with all of you. Um, okay, perfect. So it made me the host. Fantastic. I want to show you the original message that I sent Steve on Facebook. And this message is dated December 16th, 2010. And this is the message here that I communicated and Steve responded back to me, which was amazing. And this is the message that made it into the book. And so I was looking at, at the, the book here, and I'm on page 351, and there's just a little tiny mention about me. I'm not like a major part of the book in any way. But when I saw my name in there, when I got my copy of the book, I was like a, a kid in the candy store. And I was, I was so, um, uh, it, it was inspiring to me. And I, re I reached out to Steve and, uh, we then agreed to have a call the next day, and that's when the Facebook group got created. And so um, 
I share that with you, this one message, you know, 12 years ago that Steve responded to was the catalyst of my involvement, which was creating the Facebook group. And now we've expanded to Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube, et cetera. And um, I wanted to just point out, it's, it's amazing that Steve's with us right now in this moment. And I can see Steve and Amy on, on the screen. And here it is, you know, it's his birthday. And he could be anywhere in the world. And he's here out of his commitment for the Bing movement and wanting to be here with all of us, you know, and, and what a, I, I'm just, I'm so inspired, Steve, um, by you. And I, I made a, a commitment to lead the, the Facebook group and now the movement for 20 years. And I'm a busy guy. I got a lot going on in my life, running my company and parenting my children, being married and just, just living my life. And and that that commitment was created out of my love for Steve. And so it's just amazing how one human being can make a difference and we can all be Steve in our way for our family and our company and our community and, and whoever it is that that um, is a part of your life. And I, I want to um, wrap with just two final thoughts. And one is if you haven't joined our email list yet, that's the best way for us to stay in touch with you. And you can join the email list at theultimatecoachbook.com, theultimatecoachbook.com. And I want to encourage you to interact in whatever social media platform you enjoy the most, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube. And I want to wrap with a very brief final story. And I, I had a, a situation with my daughter. She's 17. She's entering her senior year this year in high school. And... Um, she was supposed to come home the other day and she told me that she wasn't coming home and she's moving in with her mother and that's not our agreement. And that was never discussed. And that's what got communicated to me in a text a couple of days ago. And uh, I wasn't happy about that. As you could probably imagine if you're a parent and your 17 year old gives you that news and it's, um, it's a very challenging circumstance to have. So I haven't been happy the last couple of days about that situation. And this morning I thought about it and I thought, okay, how can I be loving towards my daughter? And I asked myself that question because of Steve's teaching of being, and I looked at it in a different way, instead of being angry or whatever I was feeling, I said, how could I be loving? And I sent my daughter a text and said, Hey, I'm at Starbucks. Would you like something from Starbucks? And she responded that she would. And so I went and got her her favorite drink and she was working today. And I, I went and dropped it off over with her. And instead of being angry or disappointed or frustrated, I was being loving, which created a new possibility in our relationship. And that little story is available to all of us. So I just invite you, you in my metaphor of life, you lifted the weights today for a full day, right? Of the weights of being. And I invite you, to continue to lift the weights. I'm committed to lifting the weights of being for the next 20 years to be the ultimate student. And we can all be the ultimate student. So Rafael, thank you for creating this incredible event for all of us to experience. And I wanna invite all of you to private message Rafael, just a heartfelt message of how you felt about the event and what you experienced, because it takes a lot to put on an event like this, to bring all the speakers together. And Steve and Amy, thank you for how you show up for all of us. And with that, I'll turn the meeting back over to Lindsay. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for sharing that. And I also love that story. And like you said, we can all do that in our lives. We all have those things that creep up and those messages. And man, have those been my best teachers. Um, yeah. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of those stories as well. We always get to choose how do we want to respond to that. And it's so freeing to keep being that loving because you're always, you're always being, you always get to choose who you get to be. And that's, and, and like Eric said, the, any platform you choose is continuously lifting those weights and just building yourself because why not? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want... It's only, it's only a matter of how awesome do you want your life to be, really. It's like, how awesome can you handle it? Because the more you lift the weights and the more you question yourself and the more you, you show up in, in your life in ways that you didn't even think were possible, right? 
And I love Eric's story, that example, like who thought that was an option to show up that way? So I invite you all to do that. And thank you again so, so much for being here. And Lindsay, do you have any final remarks? No, just that this was so amazing. Um, thank you to every single person who, who came. Um, the numbers stayed. I mean, people came through the, the full four segments and it was just amazing to see all of your faces here and your being and your presence was felt. So thank you guys so much for showing up and being here and being present and listening um, for the gold. And um, yeah, just thank you. Thank you, Rafal. You're very welcome. Thank you, everyone. And keep just being you. It's the only person you could be. Loving you.